When anybody ever asks me what happened to Mira, to this day, I'm not aware what happened to Mira. We all have our own little section of the story which we try and piece together. There's always a piece that's missing. Mira was selfless because she'd always put other people before her. She's got an infectious laugh. Everyone knows her by that. Oh my gosh, the laugh was like so loud. She'd always encourage me to just do my best. Just an honest and true friend. You know when you always have that one person where you sort of feel as though, oh yeah, he gives you butterflies, get all giddy. He was that guy for her. I think he was a charmer. I think he knew what to say to people. Like, his words were good. Sort of already kind of planning how she wanted her wedding. When your friend is in love, you want to support them. He seemed fine at the start. I wasn't seeing mirrors often. And I think at the time we all just thought she's just busy with her relationship. We would go to Shisha Cafe or to a Shisha bar with her. It was her thing. He would come out as well and we had no idea he'd be there. He'd make that effort to come and make sure to see what we were doing. She's always constantly on her phone. If she missed a call because she'd been to the loo, she'd really sort of panic about it. I need a charger now, I need a charger because he's going to think I'm here or there. She was just very distant. He used to make her believe things that weren't real. We'd have conversations about things and I'd just say, no, Mira, that's not right. It was a time when I actually had to really force her to come out with us. When the night finished, she was like, panicking like she was like oh my god oh my god I can't do this I can't do that and I had to literally grab her and hold her be like Mira calm down what's wrong she just kept on saying you don't understand you don't understand she had like a lot of fear in her she was very scared that's when I realized something couldn't seem so right she's changing and even though she's with us she's not here actually with us it's not the mirror that we know she had lost a lot of weight she wasn't eating she wasn't herself he'd always say oh your face is really fat You've got a double chin. I think he was controlling her in lots of different ways. Who she was seeing, how long she was seeing them for. In the restaurant, she had to take um, images of the receipt. She also sent photographs of us to him as well to show him where we was and what we were doing. Then we found out from her the next day, like he drove down and looked at the CCTV footage. This isn't right. Like he's too controlling of you and are you sure you're okay? And I think she went back and just told him that I had said that and he wanted to like punch me in the face just because I was feeding Mira rubbish. Us girls were just thinking like, well, she's choosing him a lot over us. If she really cared about us, then she'd make more of the effort. And then you start to kind of think, okay, well, do you not want to be friends with me? What, you know, what have I done? It got to a point where constantly I was trying to contact her. She was just like, no, I can't speak to you right now. Stop calling me. Don't message me, don't phone me. It was hard for us to fully understand what she was going through. What used to always help me not to message her or call her was the fact that she used to say that I'm getting her into trouble. I didn't want her to be in trouble. And then we slowly drifted away. I'd heard that she was no longer with him, so I almost felt like, thank God, I've got my best friend back. I don't think he wanted to leave her alone. He would turn up at the house, he would contact her constantly. She wanted to get back on track and start again, but I don't think she had that chance. I think there's too much for her. I think it was like four, half four in the morning. Um, I was fast asleep. My phone went as a text and it just said, bitter, which means darling, like Mira's gone. Like 10 missed calls from Bavney um, on WhatsApp and I thought, what's going on? So I called her back. I'm about to tell you something you don't want to hear. Word on the street is, is that Mira's committed suicide. I had called all our friends and I just said, we need to go to the house. I rang the doorbell and I just thought she's going to be there to open the door and say, I'm sorry, this was the only way I could get you here. We just couldn't believe that this is, this is real, this has actually happened. It's really hard when you lose a friend. We try to celebrate her and, you know, keep it all positive and remember that everyone loved her and she was amazing. 
she was such a big part of our lives, but we just have to like just keep strong, keep positive and just be there for the family. You know, you never think that somebody's going to go to such extreme measures. If any of our friends, I think, going forward were even a little bit upset, I think we would take it very seriously. You know, you've got friends for a reason, whether they're going through a hard time or you're drifting away from them, you need to make effort with them, no matter what. And you, need, you just need to be there for them, whether it's knocking on their door, if they're ignoring your calls just to let them know that you're there. It's okay if your life's not perfect. It's okay to talk about it. It's okay to open up and speak to somebody. My friend never did. She never really openly ever spoke about what she was going through. And we've lost her.